Hey, good afternoon. Welcome to Get Real with Rick Dancer. Today we are going to get real. Um, this is going to be a topic that um, may be uncomfortable for some of you, and, and honestly, um, I hope it is. It should be uncomfortable for all of us. Um, Karen Mitchell. Hi. And she is a, one, a friend of mine. Two, we're in the same networking group. And three, uh, she's, I would call you in my world, an expert on violence, domestic violence, um, women being treated poorly, um, child abuse, that sort of thing. Don't you think? I wouldn't necessarily call myself an expert, but I do know a lot of stuff that is pretty valuable, especially to people who aren't, aren't as aware of the information that I know. Uh, they're obviously much more qualified people out there, but, but I'm always happy to talk about awareness on, on all these things. So the Oregon Networking Exchange, which we are both a part of, is a networking group. We're going to talk about that a little later. That's who's sponsoring this show. And Karen and I just were talking, and she's going to be speaking at our meeting today. So if you're interested in what you're hearing, uh, we meet at Dickie Joe's <clears throat> over by Valley River in the back in the conference room at 3.30, from 3.30 to 5. And if you want to come hear more, ask more questions of Karen, you can. <clears throat> and the first two people that show up, we will uh, buy your beer. Hey, honey. Hi, Gab. Is that your husband? That's the hubby, yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, hey, hubby, share this live on your page right now. That would be really yes, helpful. Yes, please, and tag me in it, too. And tag her, and so it will yes. go to theirs as well. Um, any of the rest of you on here right now, if you would share this live on your page right now, you'll see how to do it. It will come up and tell you. And just share that live. And also, while you're at it, just hit that every time I come on live, um, that it notifies you. And you don't have to put me on. I mean, you can just ignore me, but at least you have the option. You'll learn a lot of great stuff if you do pay attention. Though. Yeah, there's a lot of fun stuff on yeah. here. So anyway, um, the newest news in terms of Me Too and kind of that whole, um, and this is just shocking to people. Um, yeah. The number of men who have in powerful positions are abusing women, sexually touching, assaulting, um, it, it, it's, it's insane. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. surprise you. No, not at all. It, what I'm really, the Me Too, once that started coming around and we're seeing more of that on Facebook, it was, it's been an outlet for a lot of people to start talking about what has happened to them. So I'm not surprised that it has gotten so much bigger because it raised awareness and it raised awareness on a topic that we choose to ignore. Kind of like we chose to ignore, we, we even still do, but we chose to ignore domestic violence in the 80s and 70s you know we didn't talk about it it's what happened in your house it's what happened in your house we didn't talk about it and I think sexual assault has very much been that way um, in the past and so now we have an outlet to talk so let's talk about it right and I think you know we have to go to the <clears throat> there's some very wealthy ex high profile people and I was watching a show on Sunday morning yesterday um, I know it wasn't Sunday morning but I you know DVR it so I'm watching and they were talking about um, Weinstein yeah. And how he, the money, the amount of money he paid to people to shut them up. He gave yeah. one of the women, one of the people he abused, a million dollars to quiet her. And this is the game. This is right. what, so they, they get away with it. And, and then the message to other people in that social stratosphere is that um, if you pay enough and you have enough money, you can, you can do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And um, so what, Karen, what are some things that we can un better understand? So one of the things that I wanted to say, first of all, is if something has happened to you, it is not your fault. It was ha it happened to you. Don't hold on to the shame and guilt that comes with that. Get help. Talk to somebody. Um, there's lots of programs out there that can help you. Um, but one of the things that I think is most important is that we don't really have a culture of healthy knowing what healthy relationships are anymore, right. knowing what healthy boundaries are. Uh, you know, if somebody gets too close to you, what do you do? Most people just suck it up and sit there uncomfortably. That's right. not okay. Right. You need to have boundaries set and you need to have them set before somebody gets inside your space. Because How do you, once they're so, already like, there, what, Give me an harder. example. Like, what would that be? Um, so when I was teaching classes in middle schools and high schools, one of the things I did is I had um, a male and a female student uh, slowly walk towards each other. And when they got to that point where they're super uncomfortable, I'm like, so how does that feel? Now, is it easier to set your boundaries out here once they're already here, or is it easier to say, you know, no, it's easier once they're still out there to set it. And so having those boundaries set up in advance, even emotional boundaries too of, you know, if you're a stranger, do I tell you where I live? Do I tell you where I go to school? Do I tell you how many kids I have? No, a stranger doesn't need to know those things. And as you're getting to know people, 
knowing, you know, what is appropriate. If I've only known you for a few weeks, what do I share? What information do I share as opposed to someone I've known for years? So is part of the reason, that, I mean, one of the problems it seems to me as we were told and taught as kids is to be nice. Yes. And perhaps we need to be less nice. That doesn't mean kind. We should be kind to people. Absolutely. But sometimes we give people too much leeway because they tell a dirty joke and, and it kind of makes you feel Ugh, like that, but you don't know what to say. Right. Um, right. There also, there was, I don't know if I've ever told you about this, but there was an experiment done where a guy was standing in the back of an elevator and he was dressed with a hoodie over and all dark clothing. And as people were approaching the elevator to get on, they would all kind of, oh, startling look. And they're like, oh, okay. And every single person in that study got on that elevator. And when interviewed later, it was they didn't want to be rude. Yeah, so maybe. And it's like you just got on the elevator with basically a masked man because you didn't want to be rude. And so sometimes you just have to be rude. And blame it on Karen and Rick. We're yeah, good with that. Be like, you I'm know rude. What? Karen and Rick told me I can be rude. You know, I was telling Karen earlier that um, there's a woman, Bev Mason. She used to be a police officer in Eugene. She's since retired. But she used to go into schools 20 years ago and, and go up to kids and tell them, to, if somebody's in your face and a stranger comes up, scream. Yeah. I mean, not to go, but I mean, scream, get away from me. And she said it was really uncomfortable for kids because they were taught to be nice. Yeah. So maybe we need to be less nice and then the kindness would come in how you present that to someone when they're telling a nasty joke that to you or they touch you and it's like, you know, that kind of makes me just a little uncomfortable. I don't want you to yeah. feel bad, but I just want you to know that makes me uncomfortable. Right. Um, that way, if you have that limit, um, I think people are just, and so what, what, I, what drives me crazy is when people don't say something right. and then say something behind your back right. or go to a boss and say, I mean, I've never right. had this happen, but somebody going, I've had it on other issues, not women issues like that, but somebody right. going and telling, and then going, why did you just come tell me? I mean, why don't we have the ability and the guts to just be able to talk with people? I think sometimes that comes from just sheer surprise. Like, I can't believe that came out of your mouth. And I've even had to, just in my own, especially business relationships, as you're getting to know people in business and stuff, is send a message later to that person. I definitely agree. Like, don't go talk to the other people in the room send a message to them some people don't know I we had a guest speaker at a uh, not ONE but a women's networking group that I was at recently and the gal who was speaking said something that I find very inappropriate so I sent her a message later and was like you know what you just haven't had education on this yet and I want to talk about it can we talk about this well, she you, was very respectful about it. it went amazing Karen sent me a thing recently because she <laughs> thought that I'd said in one of my things Rick, do you call your wife wifey? Because I think you said wifey. But she was really nice about it. And I'm yeah. going, I don't know. I never call her that. So I can't believe that I said it. But maybe I did. Yeah. And then, but see, and I didn't know. I mean, I would, I don't call my wife wifey. But even if somebody came up and said, you shouldn't call her that, I didn't know why. Yeah, yeah. And so Karen, but she was kind. And she said, well, let me just explain why. Because here's what that means to yeah. traffickers. It's which, a term used in, um, in trafficking. Uh, for either other people who your trafficker is trafficking, so other women in the group that your trafficker is trafficking, or what your trafficker might call you. Um, and it's interesting because over the last probably a couple of years, I've seen that like shirts and cups and stuff that show up with wifey, and every time I'm like, oh, because even people they knew. Because they're not educated about yeah. it. Yeah. So now what do you do about to keep this from becoming, or do you? Um, to the point where, you know, there's people out there who are now going, well, now everybody's coming forward, and, and, and so there's some believability things that are coming in, which is not good. Right. Um, and so what do you do in cases like that? Is it better to just err on the side of less caution? Um, you know what I mean? I think we go with the theme of innocent until proven guilty, and, and that's just kind of always my my response to things is that person is in, on both sides of the spectrum you guys is that that person is innocent until proven otherwise and so always you know you it's better to back somebody I think that maybe isn't telling the truth and then comes out later than to not back somebody who really has been through some drastic stuff in their life and so it it can be hard and some of that is just keeping your mouth shut on social media and some of that is you know helping a friend through a tough situation so what what can I mean? Um, you talked, and we'll talk a little bit more about women. But what what can men do? What do we? What can we do? What what is it that? Um, I mean, how do we? And I think we should go to that little edge there. 
but are we too comfortable saying things that, like jokes about certain things and um, I, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? You're yes. looking at me funny, yes. so go ahead and just, I do. just do I totally it. do. I'm just married to there. a truck driver, so I, yeah, I totally agree. But I also agree that that happens uh, with women as well. I have female friends who um, also talk just like my truck driver husband sometimes. <laughs> yeah, um, I and so I think, I think it just becomes that conversation. And my husband and I have had a lot of conversations, especially as I have become a lot more aware of different things about, you know what, do you really understand what that means? And having those conversations are so important. Uh, yeah, and see, some of these things go way back, Bye. and so you just don't know. And, I mean, trafficking has been around forever. It's just modern-day slavery. That's what we just call it, trafficking now. So, and, and what people don't understand, a lot of people, is trafficking is alive and surviving and thriving in Eugene, yeah. downtown Eugene. Yeah. Um, girls are being taken and, and used as, as, I mean... Taken. Oh, that movie. I would prefer that movie never, ever came out. So what we experience here in the U.S. is so different than that. That's what you see on more of like an international trafficking stuff. In the U.S., you see people who are building strong relationships with younger adults there, and even adults. Um, they're building strong relationships with them, they're learning how to manipulate them, and then it turns into trafficking. And so it looks a lot different. It's just like our statistics of, you know, most people who are sexually assaulted are sexually assaulted by people they know. Trafficking in the U.S. is not a stranger crime. They might have originally been a stranger, but they've built a relationship with that person. So it's grooming. Yeah. So you get a guy, um, more, more than likely mostly men, yeah. who groom young yeah. men or women, Yeah. because they're doing this with men too in our community, yeah. young boys. Yeah, absolutely and they groom them uh, with the purpose of what they're gonna do, and then they start just yep. introducing yep. sex trafficking, and, and then all of a sudden you go do this, and... It starts off as very, uh, like, oh, you're just gonna give my friend a massage, and he's gonna pay you $20. It's just a massage, hey, right? There's nothing bucks, illegal yeah. in that. Um, but then it goes further, and then it comes to, well, you're already doing this with me, so why wouldn't you do it with my best friend who's gonna pay you for it? Um, and usually there's some sort of crisis and like I'm gonna lose my house or my car or something and I need you to help me through that um, and so there is a whole a whole string of grooming and manipulation and they very much prey on your hopes and dreams and desires and disappointments they get to know every single detail of you um, just like in domestic violence I mean we see this tactic in a number of different ways so they're picking out kids who don't have uh, strong parental thing you know anybody like that that they can they find your weakness and then they fulfill that right as well they pretend to fulfill it right and then it turns into sex yeah I've seen cases here in Oregon and Washington that we're talking straight-A students we're talking nursing students um, you know involved in youth groups I've seen traffickers who have gone to church with the girls they're trafficking in their families so it really is having that strong conversation of of boundaries in your household and, and making that a continuous conversation of you know what is going on in your relationship what's what's happening what are, who are you talking to online too online is where a lot of it starts and, and the online is really opening up doors for these folks isn't mm -hmm. it and because yep. there's a lot of people can be um, it, it kind of scares me sometimes because I get so many people stealing my pictures right. and making fake sites yeah. And then going after, I get women call me and they say, he was asking, first it started like just, you know, he's being nice, and then all right. of a sudden they're asking him for money, and then just before they give him money, fortunately the ones that have contacted me, they look yeah. up the picture and they find out that I'm not Brian Johnson or right. whoever it is, is, and these people are stealing people's identity and, to, and, and tricking women, and these women, some of these women are very angry with me at first, right? and they're going, you know, why'd you let your picture get used? And I said, right. I have no control. Because you have control over that. Yeah. Right, and you're so, a public figure, you have no control. So I go after they. I mean, I do turn every one of them in that I can find. Right. But you guys, you have to be That's careful. That's a full-time job, though. Right. And you have to be careful. And you yeah. got to have this conversation with your kids. Yeah. Your sons and your daughters. Absolutely. Because it's, it's happening mostly to women, I'm sure. Yeah. But young men, it's also, there's a whole Yeah, and especially in the technology realm of stuff, it doesn't matter if you're a boy or a girl. They're just looking for images and, and information. I found it interesting. I heard a detective talk last year about a uh, large child um, pornography ring that he had broken up and he said he was going through 
these all these pictures and all these files and stuff and what he was seeing was even pictures of like his friends grandkids like bath pictures that they had posted private on Facebook but somebody had leaked that photo wow. outside of their private Facebook account and shared it um, it's just disturbing it's out there and we really do have to be careful what we're putting online and what we're putting online sets an example for what our kids put online. So give some advice. What are some tips that people can do? Like, I mean, you have books here, you have things. You really need to educate yourself to, to empower yourself. And then yeah. you have to kind of have the courage um, when that guy at the office um, says something, especially if it, if it is harassment or make, you know talking about your body parts or things like that. I mean, you have to be able to... I'm scared to send my boys, three of them, out into this world, and so for so many reasons. Um, fear isn't a bad thing. Yeah. Um, but if you, uh, Kayla, if you educate your kids, um, the, you know, and give them some real knowledge that way, then you don't. I don't think you have to be as fearful. Yeah. You know, and they, it really is. It's keeping. I like what you're saying here. The dinner table, because it's keeping that conversation as an everyday conversation. And talking our kids through multiple different scenarios. You know, what happens in this scenario? I was playing a game with my kids this last year and the question came up, you know, what if the neighbor gets a new animal and invites you in to come see it, but there's no adult around to ask? And the answers I got from the four kids in the room, aging from six up to 14, was really surprising some of them. And it was just a scenario we hadn't covered. And so... So, and, and talking think, about all the different things. I think one thing I've learned with the police, you know, covering cops for so long is don't panic. Yeah. You know, and when your kid says blah, 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 don't, no. I mean, yeah. because you don't want to freak them out. You have to make this conversation normal because then the next time they come to you, I mean, if you, you if, whether it's sex or whether it's people or right. strangers or all that, it has to be that open dialogue that you have yeah. with them so that nothing is off limits. Yeah, and you never know who's listening too. If your kid comes to you and says, gosh, I saw I saw an R-rated movie at my friend's house and I was kind of uncomfortable with that. How you respond to that is going to be uh, very crucial in when their friend then feels like their boyfriend's stepping over the boundaries and maybe they don't have a house where they can talk about that, but the friend remembers, oh gosh, I was at their house when she told her mom about that movie she was uncomfortable watching and maybe I can open up to her and ask her questions about this. So you never know who's watching too when you're responding to things. And I think you have to start asking younger people questions. I'm around a lot of younger people and I had no idea. Um, somebody online had said something about hooking up and, and I went, you know, I'm thinking that's going out for coffee or something, you know? So I right. said something and this kid who's in his 20s came on and goes, yeah. Rick, that's not what that means. Yes. Um, and then and going and watching a movie anymore doesn't necessarily mean yes. going and watching a movie. I think it was like Netflix and chilling or something like that. I had posted on Facebook one time and a friend was like, do you know what that actually means? And I was like, well, it means I'm sitting at home chilling with my family watching Netflix. They're like, that's not what that means. So you kind of <laughs> have to find out from people. And I have some really great people in my life, so they'll educate me and I can go back and change that. But it also keeps me informed. So when somebody says that to me, I kind of know what I'm doing. I'm younger than I am Rick. too. I know it's crazy. Most, right. most of you are. A couple of books that I brought with me, um, both of them are by Gavin DeBecker. Great books to pick up to just educate yourself. The, the Gift, Gift of, of Fear. Fear. It is kind of a thick book, but it is an easy read. Um, he's worked on a lot of high profile cases as well as um, just has vast knowledge of, of being safe without without living paranoid and then protecting the gift, which is the one that applies to more of your children and teenagers and keeping them safe. Um, but I highly recommend both of these books. Uh, they were a great starting point for me when I started looking into more stuff and getting more educated on this. We, go ahead. Go ahead, no, oh. I was gonna start, I was looking at your notes and there's some great organizations in this town who are working really hard yeah. uh, to protect our kids and one that we both love. Um, yeah. We might as well start with them because they're first. Yep. Um, kids first. And yeah. they handle some of the most um, mistreated children in our community that you don't hear about anymore. Yeah. Um, Newsflash, uh, you know, 15 years ago, child abuse was on the, on the headlines every day. And there were right. kids being murdered and, and killed by people, family members. Um, and you don't hear about much anymore because it's not it's not as much murder anymore and now it's more secretive but it's yeah. still happening and Kids First is an organization that helps kids get through the sports system. Yeah, yeah, Kids First has been an amazing organization and a staple here in Lane County for a long time. 
Um, what is always surprising to me is I always hear, oh, we live in Lane County. It's like safe and sleepy and quiet and all these things. Kids First organization, what they do is they give services to kids who have been a victim of a crime or who have witnessed a crime. And last year they had 907 kids come through their building. That on average is about two and a half kids a day That's in like our sleepy, safe yeah. community. Yeah. That's a lot. That's really, really a lot. And and if you're one of those people who wants to first go, well, that's not going to happen to me or my kid. <clears throat> um, you, you need to educate yourself because I think there's a lot of us that just put our heads in the sand sometimes. Yeah. And um, when you get out, my wife became a casa, and oh, her that. eyes were wide open. Yeah. And it was it was really hard for her. So I'd seen it through the news business all my life. Right. But I remember Kathy coming home and going, "Did you know?" And I'm going, "Yeah." Yeah. And she said she was shocked. So that's another way you can kind of get involved if you're somebody who's educated about this sort of stuff. Is they're always looking for volunteers and help with these organizations. Yeah. Maybe not dealing directly with clients sometimes, but doing some right. things. Sometimes and financial they just support need, is good too. Yeah. Sometimes they just need somebody to help file some papers or or help organize kids first even has a closet of clothing so kids get new clothing after they come in so sometimes it's just organizing stuff like that so you're a woman did you know that I did yeah mm -hmm. so as a woman when you hear these things come forward um, I don't know I'm not insinuating this has happened to you I'm just saying how does what does that do what does that bring up um right now what it's bringing up is just I guess watching this last week when I watched the press conference with the girls from the USA Gymnastics, I felt like they, they're they so strong and they're coming forward on something that's so important and I felt like it was almost empowering to watch them be able to come out and speak about it openly and, and how amazing those girls are for coming forward in the way that they did. And so at this point, I think it's a lot more of that, like I have a lot more pride in the women around me because we're not taking it anymore. Right. Do you we're think that's forward. the big message is... And, and that's why pe I, I think it has just scared the hell out of people. Yeah. I mean, and I think I bet you have people in D.C. and and power positions around the country who are going, oh in their my business. God, yeah. you know, because it's it's gonna if people start coming out and telling about this person or that person, and yeah. and I found some of it like when some of the people, um, I'm just thinking Charlie Rose when that was uh, the allegations came out about him, and I found it kind of odd to me how his co-hosts responded oh we're just you know, and it was like oh, oh, wait a minute right um you know because i think he kind of said that some of this had happened i don't remember exactly but i think right. it's like people still have this tendency to want to cover up for people right and it's like that is it's what i love about this and it is that it has become completely unacceptable whereas yeah. before we we said it was unacceptable but we obviously, a bunch of people weren't listening, and there are yeah. people in powerful, powerful positions in this country. Yeah, and education and awareness does lead to prevention. I mean, that's where um, it boils down to, is if you're not educated on it, if you're not aware of it, uh, you don't really know how to avoid it. And that is um, from talking to a number of people who have worked directly with sex trafficking victims, that's the thing that most of them say is, I didn't know what this was until I was right in the middle of it. Right. And you I get, had no idea. And these are, and, and you guys, I think a lot of people think, and there are a lot of kids who are having a hard time that are brought into this. Um, taking into consideration kids first helped 900. Think about how many kids out there who aren't helped because their abuse is still hidden. So exactly. many more. Yeah. Exactly. And, and I, I think what's interesting is that um, there are ways you can get involved with this and you, there are ways you can help. And it, it's not just, um, and I, I'm, I'm just going to throw out a term, it's not just poor kids or underprivileged kids. Yes, right. that happens to them and they're in there, but these are educated people mm -hmm. who we all have the ability to get sucked into something like this yeah. if we don't understand and put up those barriers and boundaries that Karen was talking about earlier. Yeah. So and can, go ahead. It, does, it doesn't have any demographic that is behind you guys. It happens in all homes. I remember listening to a guest speaker one time talk about her um, like $120,000 Mercedes that had a tracking device on it from her very abusive husband. And so it, it happens in every community. It happens everywhere. So you guys, here's the deal. So Karen is in, in this networking group that I'm in. We call it it's Oregon Networking Exchange. And we meet every Tuesday from 3.30 to 5 in Dickie Joe's back behind in the back conference room. There's like 20 of us and 
the only problem you will have is that we really love each other and care about each other, and we're each other's sales force. And so uh, we're, we're trying to introduce you to different people, but Karen's our speaker today. Each day, each week, a different member of the group gets to present something or about their business or that kind of thing, and Karen's going to be yeah. talking. Yeah. So if you want to join us, um, the first it's free. And the first two people that show up will buy your beer or Coke or whatever it is that you're going to have to drink. And um, you can come in and check us out and see if you what you think. Or just get more information from Karen in person where you can kind of talk with her and hear what's going on. Because yeah. this group has changed our world. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it has increased my, my friend power tenfold. Plus, there are people that I can talk to about real issues, and that's what I like is that we we don't just talk about like the, the happy stuff. It's not the like Facebook life where we you know post the cute pictures and stuff. We talk about real life together, and I really enjoy that. As well, we have education that backs up your business, and um, yes, and I'm not driving this time. Tracy, you remember me? Thanks. Um, I did want to tell you guys, too, there's a number of great resources. If you have been affected by sexual assault, uh, speak your silence org offers free counseling for those who have been affected by it. Um, Shared Hope International is where I get a lot of my information when it comes to sex trafficking information, as well as Rebecca Bender, who is actually a gal from a small town here in Oregon who was trafficked, and now she speaks nationwide. She actually trains officers and all kinds of stuff. She's amazing. So you can look up Rebecca Bender on Facebook or online, um, as well as RAIN, which is R-A-I-N-N, -N, which is the Rape, Abuse, Incest National Network. They have a lot of great resources and a lot of good information. Um, so you guys, Lots if you want, stuff out there. if you do want to find out more, just show up today and come in and, and yeah. talk to Karen. She can talk to you, give you answer some of your questions in person. Um, and the other thing, like you were saying earlier, and I'll just do it from a man's point of view too. If you are a woman and um, or a man, uh, this happens in the gay community a lot too. And if you have, if you if you're one of the people who thinks you're a victim, you're actually a survivor in the making. And um, I, I hate the word victim. I do too, and I, I always I, I try to use the word survivor a lot, but it's hard, especially if it's currently happening, for me to break. Like survivor seems like it's past tense, and, and but it's so, what you're gonna be. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, and you will always and be a survivor. Get help so you know that you are a survivor, and you can go out there and proudly wear that and help heal hearts, heal hearts. So when you heal your heart and you're a survivor, you get to help heal other people's And you hearts. have support from people and you realize that you're not the only one because I think a yeah. lot of the lie that these perpetrators put on people is that you're the only person doing this. Yeah. And it's, um, you know, every single one of us, I don't care how smart we are or how, what our position in life is or what our business is or how much money we have, we are all susceptible to being fooled. Yeah. and tricked into something and that's nothing to be ashamed of but yeah. if but if you don't I think the only thing to be ashamed of is if, if you don't educate yourself right I mean if you're right. not if, you, if you're not out there educating yourself and the people around you and be vigilant about it I mean yeah. be a badass I mean yeah. this shouldn't be something we pussyfoot around about no. and go oh it's tender yeah. no this is something you barge in and you, you take charge and if somebody comes to you and says that this has happened to them you just close your mouth, say you're sorry, and listen. Just let them talk, and then lead them to somebody that one of these organizations that Karen's told us about. Um, yeah, I love help. the term, pass it on. So you sit there and you listen to what they have, and then you pass that on to an advocate, a police officer, a counselor, whoever has the education to back up uh, what that is. And know, too, when you're, especially when you're teaching your kids or even in your own life, tell and tell again many people say I told this person I told that person I told two or three people what happened to me and nothing ever happened teach kids to tell and tell again they have to keep telling and adults too until something's done about it yeah great cause thank you Tina uh, Tracy yeah your grandma used to tell her only a fool the only fool is one who doesn't learn yep yeah and yeah which is why I no longer play bean boozle with my kids <laughs> you know if you've ever been tricked into anything as an adult yeah. bean boozle if you have kids around You've been tricked into something as an adult, trust me. Laura West, you can see the hamster wheel going in people's heads when you are talking. It signals they are listening. Yeah. You know, that's a great thing about what we get to do here. Yeah. And
and I, I feel I mean I feel honored to get to do this because we're educating people so you guys really the thing you could do that helps so your involvement has been answering questions and stuff and listening and participating please share this on your page because here's the deal you don't know if your best friend is one of these people whose deaths happened to you don't know and so we all assume no nobody I know so if you post it on your page and somebody comes on and sees Karen talking sees something we've said or one of your questions and goes and it's spark something for them to say yeah. wait a minute what that guy did to me really was yeah. sexual abuse I mean I just always wrote it off but that really was or what when that you know man called me and did this that yeah. that's the kind of stuff because sometimes we bury that stuff yeah yeah I'll never forget recently I wish a gal shared a story with me she was eight years old when she was sexually assaulted and it took until her like fifth sixth grade year when she had health class to even know she said I felt icky and gross about forever she goes but I didn't know it was wrong and I didn't know I needed to tell anyone and to go that many years and feel that way and not have that that's why talking about this stuff is so important so important because we need to start young uh, child psychologists say we need to start teaching our kids body boundaries as soon as they're verbal right so that's young we're talking a one and a half year old yeah. you know well, because there's people out there, creepy people, who will do that. Rick, you again are bringing these subjects to people like Karen to us, making people think. And you guys, if you want to connect with me on any um, way, I will actually comment on this later. You can send me a message through Facebook. That's usually the best way to get a hold of me. It comes through my phone, just like a text message. Yeah, so if you um, want to talk. If you have questions, need more information, you can connect with me, absolutely. Because if you are someone who's been in this situation, Karen knows a lot yeah. and is not afraid. Yeah. I have lots of resources if I, if I don't know what information to give you. I know phone numbers and places to call. I love that. Um, I recently had a friend on the East Coast that was assaulted and I was able to actually give her, she doesn't like me on the phone, so I was able to give her through RAIN, you can actually text message them now and talk to an advocate over text huh. message and over instant message. So I thought that was pretty amazing. So again guys, share this on your page or to someone you know um, who, who would, might be empowered by that. And then also show up at our group, come yeah. meet us at 3.30, Dickie Joe's in the back and find out what networking is all about, especially if you're a small business owner because um, we got to stick together. This is my sales force, yeah. uh, these people, and we do thousands and thousands of dollars worth of business because we're helping each other yeah. um, and we all need that kind of help so that was it's fun. a fun group and we'll talk about serious stuff today but we'll also I always try and make it light and fun like the matching flannels you know you get See? serious topics but you got to have some fun with it you gotta right? have some flannel and the red yeah. hair versus the steel blonde steel blonde <laughs> I call those natural platinum highlights when they show up up here <laughs> those are called chrome <laughs> oh there she put rain and what was the other one um, Tracy can you put um, Rebecca Bender is another one that oh, I the like other book. local oh Tracy can you you put um, protecting, protecting the, the gift because she put yeah. the other book on there so the other book is protecting the gift yeah. if you would throw that on there that would be awesome and yeah. that way people can find those I will be in April making a trip down I believe she's speaking in Roseburg to go hear Rebecca Bender speak um, she's pretty amazing and watch her YouTube videos check her out on Facebook she's local so you're getting a lot of local information of stuff that happened to her right here in our community all right, there's the book. So, All right, that's thank what you, Tracy. For. You're All right, awesome. You guys, she's my she's my official secretary. I know, I love it. Gosh, she fills in everything because I don't have time to go do this. So we anyway, should interview her. I know we should bring her on. Wisdom highlights, Rick. Oh, wisdom, wisdom highlights. highlights. Yeah, I like that. Uh, most people would probably disagree with you. They're <laughs> called wisdom highlights. They say smart ass highlights, maybe. <laughs> <There's some> things. <laughs> Rebecca Bender. Okay, good. Yes, All right, you guys. you guys. See you later. Bye. Thanks, Karen. Yeah, thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Oregon Networking Exchange too. Yes.